Right now, it is our great opportunity, rather, to welcome in the West Coast Conference Commissioner, Gloria Navarez, with us. Gloria, it's great to have you back on the show and in Las Vegas. Spencer, it's so great to be here with you in person. Yeah, my goodness, yes. And we're going to have fans back. I know. How have preparations been different for you as you've prepared to welcome fans back into the Orleans Arena? You know, it's been much closer to normal than we have been in the last two years, and I feel like an excited puppy just being back <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> I think that's, uh, we all kind of feel that way for sure. Are there going to be any limitations for the fans? Like, is it a max crowd? Like, what, what are the dynamics of that? No, Vegas, uh, the state of Nevada lifted their mask mandate. Of course, if you, you know, want to wear masks to your comfort level, absolutely, but we don't have any uh, restrictions in uh, capacity. I, I feel like we are inching closer and closer to normal, which is just fantastic. Yes. What's the best part about this week for you personally? It, again, it's the excitement. Not only just COVID, but I, our league has invested so much mm. in basketball, both men's and women's, and you can see the progress year over year. But for COVID, you know, 20, we would have had three teams in the men's side, single seed last year's Portland women upsetting. It's just been such great hoops. So I'm glad the fans, family, friends, fans are going to be back with us to experience it all. Uh, for those fans that are making the drive to Vegas from all of the different WCC institutions, what kind of an event or maybe what uh, different things can they expect uh, at the Orleans Arena this year? Well, fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for one. Uh, there's that. Yeah. Um, we've really invested a lot in our game operations and, you know, the show that is the production, the halftime acts, the, you know, calling the game and the, the music and the pomp and circumstance, our, all of our branding signage. You know, the floor is pretty new. It's about three years old. And so we just really have tried to elevate the experience to compare with any other major Division One conference out there. Fantastic. West Coast Conference Commissioner Gloria Navarez is with us on BYU Sports Nation. I have people ask me every year, hey, how come BYU TV does all of these games and not just the BYU games? I know how I have answered it and will continue to answer it. But from your stance, why has the West Coast Conference continually chosen BYU TV as the primary broadcast partner for this specific event? Well, first, our ESPN does have our first rights, so they do take the, you know, a couple games at the end of the event. But BYU TV is unparalleled as far as a campus-run network, as far as their quality of production. I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but ESPN will take the BYU feed any day of the week. Yes. It's so high quality. They called us a mini ESPN last week. Yes. Which we appreciated. <laughs> we appreciate because, you know, you're in the family and, you know, don't really charge us market rates on occasion, so we love that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's all about what works for business, right? And it's yeah. mutually beneficial. Exactly. Okay, speaking of BYU, the men's team is in a very interesting situation. Uh, we were just talking about uh, what they need to do to really kind of bolster their resume, obviously winning on Friday night and then getting an opportunity for a late quad one win against San Francisco. That would help BYU a lot, but is it in – the conference's best interest for BYU to win that game because that maybe would give the WCC the best chance to have four teams in the tournament? So what you said just now, neutral court quad one game for both San Francisco and BYU. Yes. The way we're looking at it, it's an acceleration game. Okay. There are no losers when you play that game because it's a quad one neutral court game. And that's what we've worked so hard to achieve by raising the level of the league top to bottom, these types of games helps boost resumes, whether you win or lose. Yeah, and I'm looking at a team like, uh, and you and I were talking during the break, and I, and I went hard after North Carolina yesterday on BYU Sports Nation, but I know North Carolina obviously has long-standing branding. They have championship caliber history, but they're not the North Carolina that we have seen in the past. In fact, the ACC is somewhat down this year. But yet they are, according to a lot of brackets, firmly in. And I'm seeing, okay, they have one quadrant one victory. BYU has four. If you combine Q1s and Q2s, North Carolina has five victories. BYU has seven. So why is it that BYU is, you know, more commonly out compared to North Carolina? And that's, thank you for bringing that up, because that's what fans, you know, and articles like to talk about. But every year is a new start. 
I don't care who you are, I don't care what your brand is, how many times you've been to the tournament. Your resume starts at the beginning of the season and ends at the end of this season. And yeah. BYU went out, you look at their resume, the way they scheduled, they, were, they came through non-conference, they had a couple injuries, they've found their legs since, but that's what the committee is tasked with doing, looking at the snapshot that is this year, but also where are they today when they end the season? Better, healthy, stronger, rebounding from some of the lost players. So I, I think they have just as good as case of anyone else fighting for that at large. Is it fair to say that that is the message that you are delivering to the selection committee? If Every not, what, what else are you talking to them about? Yes, yes. And our selection committee reps have been fantastic. We talk to them daily. We text them on any developments. But, you know, we have three locks right now, in my opinion. And I think BYU, no matter what happens here, is worthy of a at large. Gloria Navarez, the commissioner, has spoken. So let it be written. She feels that the Cougars belong in the bracket. We're, we're with you. On the women's side, the BYU women, we kind of feel like, are not getting the respect that they deserve. We feel like, okay, looking at the resume and all of the teams they have beaten head-to-head -head that are currently slated to be in the tournament, they deserve to be at least a four seed. And again, we obviously are biased because we watch that team closely. You do too in the West Coast Conference. What does BYU have to do to better their resume on the women's side and say, hey, we deserve to be a top four seed? You mean here at the tournament or yeah, generally? Just, just in general. I mean, yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think they've done the work. They've scheduled correctly and won the games they needed to win. I, I have a lot of confidence in our reps on, on the women's committee, too. They've been following us closely, and we've been providing them information minute by minute. So I think we're well positioned there. Okay. Uh, what are those conversations like emotionally for, uh, for the West Coast Conference with the committee? You know, it's really funny because we strategize. You know, we want to be biased, we want to cheer, we want to sell, but you have to maintain credibility. So you don't want to be a used car salesman, but you do the research, you get the data, just like you were talking about. You're looking at the team sheets, the quad one and two wins, and making the case. I think it's really important to talk about what's happening to the teams behind the scenes. Who had to sit for COVID or who was out certain games, how you know certain players are responding to injuries. So it's really a balance of art and science when we make the pitch to the committee. What has been the best part about having a brand like Gonzaga be so consistent on the men's side and essentially be the top seed overall for the majority of this season? I think all boats rise with the tide because every time Gonzaga starts a season, national basketball media eyes are looking at the WCC and we have a chance to sell our message through every single game they are on, every time our logo, our family brand is on that uniform. It talks about how great the WCC is. And when they come through conference play and they don't always, you know, um, win by double digits, that's a strong statement. Sure. Do you feel like the West Coast Conference is finally getting the respect that you have pined for for so long? <laughs> yes. I think we're turning that corner. Man, COVID set us back for sure. That year, those couple of years would have really been great stories to tell. But um, I think the people who know basketball, the folks that cover us, the national media, understand mm -hmm. our investment and how it's paying off. Gloria, you've been fantastic to work with. We appreciate the relationship that BOA TV has with the West Coast Conference. You're always so yes. kind to us. We know how busy you are. Uh, before you go, I do need to ask, what's your go-to snack when you're watching all these basketball games? Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its are your thing. <laughs> yes. Get the ladies some Cheez-Its. <laughs> get her some cheese and crackers. Let's go. I think we can work that out for you. Maybe we can get a sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Gloria, thanks for hanging out with us on BYU Thank Sports you, Nation.